We can use Detect Secrets to help identify secrets such as credentials, API keys, passwords, and other secrets that might be stored inside of source code when we try to commit that code to the code repository. To start with, you need to have the pre-commit framework software installed. You also need to have Detect Secrets installed. To check for pre-commit, you can look for the version of pre-commit that you're running. You should get back a response from doing the command, and the same goes for Detect Secrets. If you don't have one of these installed, you can install either one using the pip command. So you do a pip install and then the name of the software package. If you try to do this once it's already installed, it should just give you back a message that it's already installed or it may give you the externally managed error message, in which case you can either install it inside of a environment, virtual environment, or you can install it globally. So once you have the software installed, let's take a look at how it works. So you need to have a file in the top of your Git local repository, and it's going to be a hidden file, starting with a dot. And this is going to be your configuration file called pre-commit config yaml. That'll tell the pre-commit framework how to create the script that will automatically be run when you try to commit your code to the local repository. I have an example that we can look at and certainly you can use this example or you can customize it to your own needs. And the way the YAML file works is it tells what version of the software that we're using. You'll notice that the version that we're using is the same as the version that I got when I printed out the version earlier, 1.5. We can also say what arguments are going to be passed automatically to the command when the command is run. So in this case, we're going to pass the baseline option along with the name of our baseline file, which we're going to call .secrets.baseline. And once we decide what the name of the file is going to be, we need to make sure that we have that file created before we try to use the software. And then you can decide when do you want the Git to actually run the detect secret script for you. In this case, we've said that we're going to run it on commit, and then we're also going to run it on push. Of course, you can change that accordingly. You can get the example files right off of the Detect Secrets GitHub page so that you don't have to type this out by hand. In order to make sure that we have the baseline file, we can create that for the first time by using Detect Secrets to scan the repository as is. The baseline file is the list of all the tokens that are currently in your source code that might look like secrets, but that you're confident are not secrets. Now, of course, if you're not sure if they're secrets, you need to go through your code and clean up your secrets first, because you don't want to accidentally hide a secret in your baseline file when it really is a secret. To create the baseline file, we're going to do detect secrets and scan our local repository. Again, we're in the root of the repository right now, the same file folder that the .git file and .git folder are in. So once you do that, you'll, you'll want to create the baseline file by scanning all of the artifacts that are currently checked into your local repository. Now we have the .secrets.baseline file that'll be automatically checked whenever Git calls the detect secrets on our behalf. Next thing we need to do is have the framework create the script for us that will cause Git to call detect secrets for us. So to do that, we're going to use the pre-commit framework, and we're going to use the install keyword. And this automatically looks for that YAML file 
we don't have to specify the name of the file. When we run the command, a script is going to get created for us at the following directory here in the pre-commit. We can take a look at what that looks like, although it's, this is not entirely a necessary step. And you'll see that this file was created by pre-commit and it runs the detect secrets for us whenever a commit is committed. You can change the script to suit, but you shouldn't have to. It should just work the way you expected. And you'll notice that it's referring to a pre-commit config YAML automatically. That's the assumed name. So let's test this out. First off, let's create a file that looks like it might have a secret in it that would not be in our baseline. We've already done the baseline prior to this step. So if we create this new file now, this will be after creating the baseline and it should be detected as a new secret once we try to commit it. We'll put this in a file called text.txt. Now if we ran the text secrets right now, it's not gonna notice this file because we haven't tried to commit it to the Git repository yet. What we wanna do is we want to try to do a commit which will trigger the hook calling the text secrets on our behalf, passing the baseline parameter to it, and it should exit with a non-zero error code which is gonna stop the commit in its tracks. So first things first is we're gonna do a git add on the file and we can do git status just to make sure that we know what's going on here. So now we have a new file called text.txt and let's try to commit that file. So do our standard git commit. And we'll try to commit that file. And we see that the scan failed because the text secrets believes it found a secret located in line number one of the file named text.txt. And if you believed that this wasn't really a secret, if it was actually just a uh, some kind of GUID representing some config value or something that has nothing to do with credentials or secrets at all, you can technically allow or mark that as a false positive by adding a comment to the end of the line. So let's take a look at doing that. We'll just go to the end of the line and we'll put a comment here. Pragma allow secrets. You do need to have a comment symbol. We'll save that and then we'll rerun the commit. And you'll notice that because we're allowing that particular line or marking as a false positive, it goes ahead and passes that. And you could go ahead and recreate your baseline at this point as well so that this was in the baseline and wouldn't get picked up again in the future. Then you wouldn't even need that special comment necessarily. But the comments are handy because they let everybody else in the project know that you looked at the finding and you handled the finding and you can add more information into your comment for the other members of your project team. So by using detect secrets and automatically calling it whenever you try to do a git commit, you can scan any new files that are not already in your baseline file to detect patterns that look like they might be secrets and that way you can investigate those before you proceed with the commit up to the source code repository.